So what you're looking at beside me is one of my favorite things in my home gym, and that's my water heater enclosure and what I consider to be the king of organization, and that's wall control. I've been a wall control user now for several years. This is an excellent product with a lot of utility. You may have seen it in some other home gyms because it's become very popular in this community. What I'm gonna walk you through today is an overview of the wall control system, some of the best attachments that I think you can buy for your home gym, as well as some tips that'll help you not only in terms of selecting the right wall control boards, but also installing them. More on that, coming up. Hey friends, I'm glad you're here because today is yet another perfect day to talk about gym equipment. Hey guys, my name is Adam with Garage Gym Lab and if you're new here, this channel is all about testing and reviewing gym equipment, building the home gym community and providing inspiration to anybody out there who's looking to build their dream gym. So if that's something you're into, I definitely encourage you to subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all the weekly content. All right, so I get asked about my water control setup a lot. This has been a game changer for me for a couple of reasons. The first is that it does a great job of organizing all of my accessories, all of my attachments, something I'll get to here momentarily. But the second is that it's a part of my water heater enclosure. Now, this video isn't gonna be a DIY about my water heater enclosure. I'll make that video another time. But because I know I'm gonna get asked about it on this video, this is not a permanent, fixed solution, this wall actually pivots out so I can access my water heater if and when I need to. But not only does it work to hide the heinous look of a water heater, but it also gives me 50 additional square feet of storage space that I otherwise wouldn't have had. And in the home gym where, as we know, space is king, to the extent that you can create efficiencies, you absolutely should. As I mentioned, I've been using wall control now for several years. I first started in my original garage gym with four panels. Liked the application so much that I added three more a few months later. And then when I moved to this house, I added three more for a total of 10. Why I think wall control is really the king of organization is for a few reasons. The first is durability. You've probably all seen those brown masonite compressed wood and fiber pegboards. Maybe you've seen them in your granddad's shed or something like that. And those are fine if you're really tight on budget, but they don't really look all that great in my opinion. And then under heavier load, they're prone to warping, bending, or even ripping. With wall control, you really don't have that problem at all. Each of these panels is built with 20 gauge steel. So right off the bat, you're getting a much more durable product. When you properly mount these and you evenly distribute the load, they're capable of holding up to 200 pounds, which is great for us home gymmers because we're looking to hold things like cable attachments, like accessories, chains, etc. As you can see on mine, I've got a couple panels here holding some pretty heavy duty prime fitness accessories and they do so with ease. The edges are folded over three fourths inch and they're rounded to prevent any sort of sharp edge. In the corner and on the middle edge, you'll find a total of six mounting holes. These are spaced 16 inches on center so it accommodates most people's studs and their walls. Wall control also provides all of the hardware that you'll need including screws and if you don't have that proper stud spacing, then they'll actually give you drywall anchors as well. Now, having installed wall control on several occasions now, I do highly recommend that you'd use studs. And if you don't have 16 inch stud spacing, or if the existing studs would lead to your wall control being uncentered, then I would recommend some sort of a stringer setup. This is exactly what I did in my last garage because having used those existing studs, my system would have been very uncentered between my windows, which would have really triggered my OCD. So what I did was I painted a few boards, mounted those to the studs, and then put my wall control on top of those boards. And the end result was a very nice looking wall control setup that was also very stable. The second thing to consider if you're mounting directly to studs is if you're planning to string multiple panels together side by side, like I have. In that case, you're gonna have two panels being mounted into one stud. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that joint is as close to the center as possible. Otherwise you risk missing the stud or creating a weak connection. So get yourself a quality stud finder, use a pin nail if you need to, explore around and try to get as close to the midline as you can so that your panels are as strong as they can be. In terms of the panels themselves, you have options as it relates to size and orientation. Most people are gonna buy the 32 inch by 16 inch panels. That's what you see here. So this is 32 inches tall by 16 inches wide. But they also make a landscape version that's 32 inches wide and 16 inches tall 
that you can see right here at the top. Now, an admittedly silly mistake that I made when I first purchased wall control was actually buying all 32 inch by 16 inch panels with the intent of rotating a few of them to mount horizontally. Just know that you can't do that because of the way that the slots are vertically aligned. So if you wanna have a mix like I do, then you need to buy one or more of each version. One little oddity as it relates to the orientations of these is that the 32 by 16 inch boards start with the vertical slot first and the 16 by 32 inch boards start with the round peg hole first. I'm not really sure why wall control did this. Maybe there's a perfectly legitimate reason, but I certainly would have preferred for them both to start with the same peg hole or vertical slot. That way things line up a little bit neater. So that brings me to the actual slots of wall control and what attachments I think are best for your home gym. When wall control was first designed, they only included the vertical slots, which limited you to only wall control accessories. They since redesigned that to include round peg holes, which is great because it opens up more versatility and variety in terms of your attachment selection from outside companies that use one fourth or one eighth inch holes and one inch spacing. Here's another mistake that I made when I first bought wall control buying a variety pack of attachments. I did this simply because I didn't know which attachments I needed for a home gym application, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly which ones that you need to buy. I leaned on my friend Joe Gray, who is one of the OGs when it comes to having wall control in the home gym. By the way, Joe is the creator of the Garage Gym Competition, an online inclusive powerlifting competition Definitely recommend that you guys check them out. I've been very thankful to be a part of that council over the last few years. This year we gave out over $30,000 of gym equipment to dozens of winners. So be sure to check them out. Participate this coming spring. I'll put a link in the description down below. Right now there's about 55 different attachments that you can buy from wall control for their panels. And then of course there are many more that you can buy from places like Amazon and elsewhere. The good news is that you really only need about two or three of them, and I'll put links in the description down below. If you do go with wall control, you can use code GARAGEGYM at checkout. This will save you 10% off of your entire order. Now the hook that I use the most is the long reach two and seven eighths inch hook. These come in packs of four, I bought 12 of them, and they're great for basically everything, carabiners, hitch pins, cable attachments, bands, you name it. They have a pronounced front edge to keep things from sliding off. And again, they're just a great hook. I also have the three and a half inch curved tip, not a three and a half inch curved tip, the three and a half inch curved tip attachment. Just wanted to clarify that. And it's also a great attachment. They cost about the same and I would highly recommend either one of those. The next attachment that I use the most is the six inch extended reach hook. This has a slant, <laughs> I'm sorry, extended reach. <laughs> for your attachments pleasure. These come in sets of two and I bought 10 sets of them. I use them mostly for things like hitch pins and belts and foam rollers and the like, but very, very good hook. Highly recommend the extended reach six incher. Between these two or three attachments, they take care of probably 95% of my stuff. I do have a shelf, which is great for some things. I like to keep my barbell maintenance things on there. I also have a U-shaped attachment, which was purpose bought from my Stronger Than You gut wrench landmine. And that's it. If I were to go back or add anything else, I'd probably add a basket or two. I know Basement Brandon is big on his. He's got a great wall control setup. Unfortunately, wall control doesn't sell any baskets, but thankfully you can find plenty on Amazon that use those round peg holes. And they're great for odds and ends or other oddities that just don't fit on a normal hook. As far as how these attach, it's really very simple. There's a notch at the top and there's a notch at the bottom. So you simply slide that into the slot, press down, you'll hear and feel a click letting you know that it's secure and in place, and then you're good to go. Another really cool feature of wall control is that you have some options when it comes to customization. As of the time of this video, wall control offers 12 different colors for their main panels and five different colors in their signature series. The Signature Series is a textured matte finish as opposed to a high gloss finish that you see here. They also have different colored attachments, not as many. They have white, black, blue, and red, but that's a pretty cool feature if you wanna add a little bit more accent to your panels. I went with a single color white throughout because I wanted it to have somewhat of a floating look to it with the attachments, but you can really configure it however you want. The other really cool customization feature and something that's relatively new is Wall Control's collaboration with Hangtime out of Atlanta, Georgia. 
Here you can print whatever you want on your wall control panels. You can search and use any of Hangtime stock images, or you can upload your own graphics, colors, images, whatever. It's definitely more expensive, but if you like the idea of going true custom, then this is a really cool feature. So how much does all of this cost? Well, wall control is a premium offering in the pegboard market, but you get a premium product that's made right here in the USA. Each panel is gonna run you between $23 and $26, although wall control does sell two packs that'll save you a few bucks. In terms of accessories, you'll be looking at between five and $6 for most, and those come in sets of one up to sets of six. They also have bigger attachments like those shelves, and those are gonna run you up to about $20. So in terms of my setup here, which is way more than what most people are gonna need, this all costs around $450 or so. For the average person who's just looking for two or three boards and some accessories, you'll be looking at between 70 and $120, give or take. Again, you can use code GARAGEGYM at checkout. That'll save you 10% on your entire order. And I do recommend buying directly from Wall Control for that reason. They also have free shipping over $50. That said, if you do prefer to shop somewhere like Amazon, you can find, I think, all of Wall Control's products there. I'll put a link in the description down below. So in any case, this is my accessory setup. I highly recommend Wall Control for its durability, its overall aesthetic, and its function. So let me know what you guys think of Wall Control in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, be well, and we'll chat soon.